Hey everybody, it is Kyle Nitro for Nitro Maniac TV's Wrestling Unlimited coming at you with the Nitro's take for SummerSlam. That's right, uh, the 2020 version of WWE SummerSlam went at uh, the Amway Center in Orlando, Florida under the WWE Thunderdome virtual fan concept for the first time ever on pay-per-view on uh, sorry, August 23rd, not October 23rd, August 23rd, 2020. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was a fairly I thought fairly decent show, but let's go through it and uh, here are some of my favorite moments from the night. By the way, stick around till the end of the video here. We're going to try something brand new where I just uh, posted it up on Twitter after the show at my account at Kellen Nitro, where you guys could pick the match of the night. And uh, we have a clear cut winner tonight, uh, much like you've seen. Me kind of tested out on the NXT TakeOver one from uh, last night. Uh, tonight, uh, we actually have a clear-cut winner tonight. So uh, uh, stick around to the end of the video and you'll be able to check it out. All right, so into the pre-show and it is announced that it is Renee Young's last appearance on WWE TV. We found this out uh, last week, over the week, that she would be leaving WWE uh, to pursue other interests and opportunities. Uh, I, myself, uh, Renee Young's tenure in WWE... Um, very interesting for me. Uh, didn't like her to begin with and was never never really a fan of hers until maybe the last uh, few years. I think that the Talking Smack uh, episodes with Daniel Bryan were uh, when I really... And she started to have more personality and more uh, of, of a little bit of a, of, a, of, a, of a presence in that stuff behind her announcing... Uh, about 2016, 2017-ish. It was really when it registered with me that she really does have some talent for this industry, for sure. Um, and uh, it's going to be tough to go forward with these major shows not seeing her anymore on that. But, uh, I mean, if she jumps ship and joins uh, up with her husband in AEW uh, within the next few months, then she's still involved in the wrestling um you know, world, then that's great. If she decides to do her own thing, which has been talked about, that's great as well. Um, you know, case in point, my change of heart about her was last year. Um, I think, I want to say either last year or the year before, prior to the Royal Rumble. Might actually have been even prior to before this year's Royal Rumble. Uh, she did a guest bit on Hockey Night in Canada up here in in, uh, in Canada uh, during a Oilers Vegas Golden Knights game because her and Moxley do live in Vegas and uh, the, the Oilers were in Vegas and it was a Hockey Night in Canada national broadcast. Rogers, that is the parent company that has all the licenses for WWE in um, Canada, also owns the NHL rights. So. Uh, they were doing some cross promotion with some stuff. It was definitely around the Royal Rumble event, and uh, they brought in uh, Renee Young to kind of do some play-by-play -play stuff uh, during a period during the game. Uh, just it's kind of like the the third voice on a panel and that stuff where there was the play-by-play -play guy, the color guy, and then Renee was talking. So I thought it was you know a, a, a fun thing where she you know, got in a couple of quips in during a couple of replays on the guys and that stuff and whatever. Uh, the amount of backlash she got on Twitter, though, for doing so was, uh, you know, quite just, you know, your typical uh, people taking things too literally and too seriously. So, and I felt bad for that. I felt that, no, she's just coming in to do a, a, a crossover thing, which is very, you know, working in the media business. It's very common in the media business that a company that has many brands would get two people that are identifiable on both brands to kind of cross over on each other's shows or whatever and promote each other's work. You know, it's fairly commonplace, right? So, uh, that's uh, that's a big example of the change of heart. Uh, I do wish her well, and uh, whatever she does next will be huge. But uh, case in point, um, she's definitely left a legacy there for sure. And uh, as as not only one of the first female announcers that they used in different roles around there, and uh, and she did so quite well once she had a few weeks to settle in and, and do what she was doing, but uh, as well as, um, you know, just the presentation and uh, the whole deal of, of it all, I guess. Uh, you know, from reality TV on through, you know, the pay-per-views that we see. So, you know, kudos to her. 
U.S. title match up first in the pre-show, Apollo Crews versus MVP. The Hurt Business is banned from ringside in this one. MVP's got new tunes. And the Thunderdome itself looks neat with the SummerSlam colors and graphics. However, I find myself distracted a bit watching what the Wall of Faces is doing in the background. Uh, case in point, later on in the night with the sasha Oscar match. And uh, remind me to get back to that when we get there. But um, anyways, the match itself it is kind of a lagging, long encounter, adequate for TV. But uh, Cruz gets the pin by wrestling out of MVP's playmaker attempt and into his own toss powerbomb finisher. Uh, for the free count, get retains the title. Post match, Lashley and Benjamin attempt to get him uh, in the ring and jump him for a hurt business three on one, but he is denied. And Apollo Cruz walks out with the WWE United States Championship in that one. The runtime for that match six minutes and forty seconds. It's on a pre-show. It's on YouTube. If you care, go watch it. Really awesome opening, and then right into our next match, which is for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Bailey lost to beat the clock challenge to Naomi uh, on Friday on SmackDown, so she has to go first in defending the title against Asuka. Uh, basically, Bailey is in control while Asuka fights from behind here. The bickering between Sasha Banks and commentary was awesome. Uh, hip attack sequence by Asuka only lands two. Bailey goes for the big elbow from the top, but Asuka catches her with an armbar. Banks forces a break on the outside, but pays the price. Banks, though, gets back up on the apron and causes a distraction, taking a hip attack for her troubles, and allows Bailey to roll up Asuka for the one, two, free count and post-match Sasha does a beat down will Oscar be near a hundred percent for later and uh, for Bailey it's 317 days as Smackdown women's champion so uh, yeah that basically is the whole shebang <laughs> right there um, of, of that match the runtime for that one is 1135 um, I wrote on Twitter that it was kind of a meh opener um, you know, it seemed like the pacing was a little bit off and the lighting in the building was screwing with everybody's eyes and the boards and that stuff. And But once the once the night went on and once you realized that you could focus on stuff in the ring and not all the action going on behind you with all the screens and that stuff for sensory overload, uh, it was better. But, um, you know, at first it was kind of jarring. Those first two matches were really jar jarring on the eyes and that's just all on production and so forth. Cole and Graves throw at ringside to a retribution package. Who are they? Which side are they on? Etc. Etc. Kevin Owens hits up commentary. By the way, if you were hoping for a retribution run in or anything tonight, um, that was it. That's the only time throughout the freaking pay per view they talked about retribution at all. Uh, was during that video package. We didn't see him in any of the matches tonight. So, um, you know, you could speculate on certain people on the main roster being members of Retribution now or certain returning people uh, coming back to the roster being leaders of this faction or whatever. But uh, as for the faction itself, uh, I don't know. Maybe they missed the booking or something. Well, WWE said that they had in the quote-unquote enhanced security up <laughs> around the building so i don't know maybe they got stuck in traffic on their way to the amway center orlando traffic is no joke everybody anyway raw tag team titles angel garza and andrade with selena vega taking on the street profits and the street profits come out amongst a ramp of exploding solo cups it was very neat uh people would go nuts except uh, there was no people so <laughs> they were just throwing cups at screens basically uh i love zelina's cosplay of sombra from overwatch i do play as sombra sometimes uh very agile type character i haven't played overwatch in a while though because my ps4 is busted so i'm gonna have to try and either fix it or um, I'm just holding out for the five now at this point. Garza and Andrade seem to be on the same page here. They've had a little bit of friction in the past few weeks, but they were a very well cohesive unit in this tag match. Uh, Garza with a reversal on Montez Ford's frog splash only gets two as a ref breaks up the assisted pin from the outside. Uh, Vega then gets taken out at ringside after a Garza super kick. Montez hits a changeup frog splash. Here was the finish for the one, two, three. And uh, the runtime for that one was 7 minutes and 50 seconds. Again, not anything different than you would see on Monday Night Raw on Mondays. Uh, 
I guess the big caveat at the end was Kevin Owens says that tomorrow night on Raw, the Kevin Owens show will be with Aleister Black. So Aleister Black will be a guest on the Kevin Owens show in Raw's debut at the Thunderdome in Orlando. Loser leaves WWE. No DQ match from SmackDown. Sonya Deville takes on Mandy Rose. So here's the story. This was to be a hair versus hair match. But after the events of the past week, this is now a Loser Leaves Town match. The events of the past week, of course, if you haven't been, for whatever reason, paying attention to a news cycle or anything, is Sonia Deville caught an intruder in her uh, uh, residence in Tampa. And um, that uh, intruder, intruder uh, ended up going to, well, is in court right now. We'll probably go to jail, the, the, uh, some, the assumed intruder. Uh, and... Um, you know, this basically made this match a foregone conclusion when they announced it on Friday. It's, okay, Sonya is going to take some time off to deal with this court case. And uh, guess what? Sonya loses. So we'll go through this. Uh, the match was fairly rigid to begin with. Lots of outside the ring work. Uh, Mandy, Mandy sets up a uh, table at ringside, but Sonya grabbed the chair. Sonya locks in a rare naked choke. No submission. Unique spot where Mandy was sending chairs along the table trying to decapitate DeVille. Uh, after three golden knee triggers, though, Rose covers for the 1-2-3, and DeVille is gone from WWE. And post-match, Otis comes down to celebrate, and Mandy, Mandy herself tries to do the Caterpillar. But uh, if you've watched her TikToks and that stuff, she, she's kind of known for uh, going viral for not being as crisp <laughs> with uh, a lot of these maneuvers and that stuff. Much like I am. I mean, like I can't, you know, you know, do the floss thing or whatever. But uh, it's it's uh, it's a shtick. It's it's a thing to you know people can laugh at, right? So, uh, yeah. A foregone conclusion became a foregone conclusion in this match. So, there you go. No disqualification match up next once again. Dominic Mysterio makes his main roster pay-per-view debut against Seth Rollins. The no DQ steps continue here as Dom Mysterio makes his second SummerSlam appearance and first in-ring match. Uh, his first SummerSlam appearance, of course, was 2005. It's on the network. The infamous custody battle match. Uh, ladder match between Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero, which is one of the all-time classics of the Ruthless Aggression era. So go check it out if we're going by WWE's sudden fascination with eras now. Rollins walking out in Rey's 1997 Halloween Havoc attire. I lulled. I love. Uh, I love Don Dominic's music. It kind of has the old school Rey Mysterio vibe to it. Not the POD version but the uh, uh the one before that <laughs> uh and dominic is kind of wearing an outfit that's mocking seth so it's all fair at this point it's 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 kind of cool uh dominic looked great on that first exchange he could chain wrestle with rollins and do some lucha stuff in fact it was very lucha he was doing flippy lucha things and uh was fairly crisp in there um didn't you know pull an eo shirai and attempt to you know spike pile drive himself into the mat or something uh so good um also a nice reversal into a ddt uh for two later on by dom which is awesome uh oh my god moment in this match is dom takes rollins through the table off of a russian leg sweep from the second rope wow uh that was wild uh a frog splash by dom for two and a half but Seth overpowers him, and eventually Ray has to get involved after uh, uh, Dominic's mom, Angie, comes out. Uh, Ray gets handcuffed, but allows Dom to get an advantage to hit a 619. But on the frog splash, uh, Dom catches a knees to the stomach, and Rollins hits the stomp in front of Ray on Dom and picks up the one, two, three. And post match, Ray consoles Dom. But uh, Seth Rollins really got his heel persona even more over here. Um, I'm not sure if this is the end of, of the feud or not, but if it has that finality here, I think it does um, bode well, if that makes sense. I, I think that uh, this is a natural end point if it does. Uh, but it being WWE, they've have, I mean, how many times have Aleister Black and Buddy Murphy wrestled? So <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those things, right? So WWE Raw Women's Title on the line next. Asuka 
Her second challenge of the night, she's 0 for 1 so far, taking on Sasha Banks, the Raw Women's Champion. Sasha gets the advantage of a hurt Asuka. Uh, they are saying the leg from the Bailey match. And yes, Bailey did work the leg uh, to the point where Asuka, you know, was limping to the ring and that stuff, but was putting on a brave face on top of it. But it's Asuka that takes advantage of Sasha and slaps a knee bar on the outside. A near count out as Banks powerbombs Asuka from the apron back and forth as the two traded near falls. Asuka hits a top rope DDT for only two. An extremely back and forth affair until Bailey interferes. Banks tries to roll up Asuka, but Asuka catches her in the Asuka lock. A submission win. Asuka is a new Raw Women's Champion. And so the runtime on that one, and I'll give you runtimes from the other matches as well here. Um, the runtime for this one was 1125. Uh, the match that I just previously talked about, Seth Rollins with Murphy defeating Dominic Mysterio with Rey Mysterio in a street fight, is 2235. And Mandy Rose defeating Sonya Deville in the no disqualification loser leaves WWE match. Uh, just a tad over 10 minutes, so 10 minutes and 5 seconds. Next contest, the WWE Championship, Randy Orton taking on Drew McIntyre. McIntyre's reign sits at 139 days. Could his long title reign uh, end up going by the wayside here? Uh, Orton on a crisscross after the opening bell grabbed McIntyre's leg and almost hooked in the RKO. Uh, kind of an ooh moment. Uh, Orton then takes control in front, including a cravat suplex onto the table. And then the legendary Garvin Stomp that Randy Orton utilizes from time to time. But Drew fights back. A figure four by McIntyre. Uh, no dice. Orton is busted open and so is McIntyre at this point. Uh, then it's time for the finish here. Uh, well, the removes and then the finish. Uh, Orton goes for another RKO attempt. But Drew gets the backslide and gets the one 2 free off of that. So... Both guys went for their money moves here. Uh, Drew went for the Claymore earlier on in the match and was denied, and Orton went several times for the RKO and was denied. It was kind of a matter of who would hit their finisher first, and uh, we would see what would happen. And, um, you know, as, as, and that's the, kind of a twist off of that. It was kind of a surprising uh, ending, actually. As some people may say lackluster, but uh, still... A definite match of the night contender. Is it the match of the night that you guys selected? We'll take a look at that at the end of the video. Is it my pick for match of the night? Hell yes. Um, a solid contest with two veterans going after the big one of the biggest prizes in the game. Hey, go for it. That's awesome. So, <clears throat> runtime on that one, by the way, 20 minutes and 35 seconds. So just a shade over 20 minutes on the pay per view. Keith Lee from NXT is not NXT any longer. He has been called up and he will make his Raw brand debut tomorrow night on a Monday Night Raw. So we'll see what happens. Maybe that's Aleister Black's opponent off of the KO show tomorrow night. Uh, I'll make a prediction there and say that, yeah, I'd like to see that match. Black versus Keith Lee. Sign me up. That would be fun. Uh, hopefully that that might be the way that it goes. I know it would be two faces going at each other, but you can get a respect thing going off of that. And also, you know, you got retribution running around. <laughs> the the, the anti-ratings. Antira. <laughs> Payback next Sunday, and it sounds like Sasha and Bailey will be a main event type match. Yes. Uh, the way that they were hyping this on a pay-per-view, it sounds like the women's tag team match and whoever comes out of that to challenge for the women's tag team titles uh, will be put up higher on the card, if not one of the two main events. If not, maybe, I, I don't think it'll be the main event, but I think it'll be probably higher up or maybe a main event style match for Payback next Sunday uh, as a title defense. So we'll see what happens if the friction between Sasha and Bailey, as it kind of started tonight a little bit, uh, continues here with uh, Asuka walking away with the Raw Women's Championship and uh, Sasha maybe holding Bailey to account for her losing that title. So we'll see. Unsure. Also, it's kind of weird having two pay per views back to back like that. So uh, it's really weird uh, to have. Um, you know, SummerSlam, and then a week later, you have two pay-per-views in August, which is, uh, you know, I know it's a shiny new toy, and I, I know that they're still trying to work the kinks out of this Thunderdome concept, but um, 
man, it's it, it that's kind of going to the well once too often here, having a pay per view the week after a pay per view. Um, and it's, maybe that's where all the SummerSlam rematches are going to be booked instead of Raw and SmackDown this week, but it doesn't give them a lot of time to build up to anything. There's a lot of stuff to build up to, but if you gave it the proper amount of time, it would be a lot better than doing this. But anyway, I'm holding judgment before it happens, so we'll see what happens. Universal title match, Braun Strowman versus The Fiend. Falls count anywhere. This is it, the last match of the entire weekend, and boy, am I white at this point. Uh, totally forgot that this was a false count anywhere match. This is a one-year anniversary for The Fiend. This is uh, about one year ago in Toronto, SummerSlam 2019. The Fiend made his debut against Finn Balor in that... Uh, uh, contest that uh, was a, a basically a glorified squash for the fiend and then we were able to see later on down the line uh, you know the plans for it and I was able to see in Edmonton uh, last September uh, at the house show at Rogers place here uh, what a possible fiend versus Seth Rollins main event would look like and uh, we've seen that and man um, you know the the character launch and everything is one of the best character launches they've had in the past decade. Maybe one of the top 10 character launches of all time. It's such a different character. It's amazing. Anyway, you know, bell rings and uh, the fight immediately goes to the outside. Fiend grabs a toolbox on the outside and clocks Strowman with it. Strowman, though, levels the Fiend right after. Uh, they keep brawling on the outside. Lots of plunder, lots of weapon play. Uh... Uh, Sister Abigail, after an exchange backstage, only lands two for Bray. Uh, Strowman busted open from the top of his head. And then towards the end of the match, Strowman grabs a box cutter and cuts open a hole in the mat. And we're wondering, why did he grab a box cutter? He's going to try and rip him open at first. And then, uh, no, he's cutting a hole in the mat to the boards. Uh, he's going to try and... Um, basically either pile drive or power bomb or whatever to fiend onto the boards uh we can thank lax versus the original lax for that because that was one of the first times i had ever seen that on pay-per-view in a major promotion a few years ago was at bound for glory uh, shout out to impact wrestling anyway but anyway Strowman gets rock bottom onto it and then a sister abigail times two onto the wood one, two, three. We have a new Universal Champion. A really rough, rough match. But the Fiend regains the Universal title that he lost to Goldberg at the last Saudi Super Show, which I think was Crown Jewel back in February before all the COVID craziness started. Uh, rough, rough match. Like I said, post-match, though, a spear from a dude dressed in black. We think, oh my goodness, is this retribution? It isn't. It's Roman Reigns, and Roman Reigns is back. A big spear by Reigns on The Fiend, and a big spear on Strowman. He's back, and he's pissed. An emphatic statement, a brand new t-shirt to wreck everyone and leave. Runtime 305, we go to black with the big dog holding the Universal title over his head. He wants a crack at The Fiend. I think he wants Strowman as well. Uh, triple threat, anyone? Potentially a payback? Maybe later on down the line if they're smart. No, it'll be a payback. Hmm. Scratch the proverbial chin. Anyway, uh, 8 out of 10 for me. I thought it was a solid show. Uh, you know, easily uh, the flow of the show and everything made it one of the better SummerSlams uh, in recent memory, but not one of the best for sure. But still really passable. Uh, there were some memorable moments for sure. I mean, you'll want to get a copy of this thing on, on Blu-ray or DVD to, dom uh, to document Dominic uh, Mysterio's very first match in WWE for sure. Uh, you'll definitely want to um, keep a copy of that. You'll, you might want to revisit the main event again. Uh, and it's time right now for your guys' pick for match of the night. It is also my pick for match of the night. So on Twitter, at Kellen Nitro, I asked, uh, new Universal Champion Drew Retains, help me out and make your pick for match of the night with the choices below. And uh, an overwhelming majority, 66.7% of you said Drew and Randy for the WWE Championship was the match of the night. And I will have to agree. Uh, there you go. So uh, <laughs> to the one guy who voted for the Profits, Garza and Andrade tag team match, uh, 
sorry, dude, you're in a minority there, but uh, <laughs> to to everybody else, hey, there we go. Um, that's your pick for match of the night, and that's my pick for match of the night. So, anyways, thanks for joining me over the past few days as we got through a really wrestle heavy weekend. Uh, join us next weekend, uh, payback. We'll take a look at it and see what happens. And then, uh, you know, weekend after that is going to be Labor Day weekend. And there'll be a lot of content on both sides. Tinyurl.com slash dragfiles and tinyurl.com forward slash Nitromaniac TV uh, for the pro wrestling stuff. Uh, Labor Day weekend's always busy on both ends. Um, just finalizing some plans for some content for that. And uh, we'll definitely take a look at All Out on the AEW side going forward as well. And also watch this channel during the week got uh, a special classic nitro steak that we're going to take a look at and a nitro steak by request as well so stay tuned this week lots of stuff upcoming later days happy wrestling watching i'm kellen nitro we'll see you